Hello fellow dragons, it's Shane from Astral Dragon Gaming. How you doing? When I was a kid in the 80s and 90s, games, videos and cartoons and arcades were the place to be. You were, if you were an outcast or if you were lost in yourself. So, this is the subject matter of the review today. The new title called 1980X from Highbit Studios. So grab your high tops, sweatbands, and cool leather jacket as we go back to the golden age of games. Of all the things that brings me back to this time in games is the vast difference to arcade and consoles at the time. For most of us it was Commodore 64, Atari or NES. Owning a PC or an Apple II he was a dream for only the super rich. But arcades, even the field, giving you great controls, fantastic visuals and deafening sound, all for the low cost of some loose change. Yes, you rocked up each week with a pocket bulging to see what was free to play or new, much like the app stores nowadays, but bigger with the 80s neon blinding beauty. 1980X captures this feeling with each of its games being classically remade of old arcade, arcade games that look, sound and feel so much like the originals. From Final Fight, R-Type to the Ninja game and Outrun, this game is a pixel's dream made, a pixel dream made real with all time finishing far too soon. More on that in a minute. The animation and style of the graphics and everything in general is top notch. The movement of this game and how easily it fleshes out each standalone sort of game. But the individual games are used here as a metaphor to express the loneliness of the nameless protagonist. Take any of the moments in this game is a feast for the eyes that brings an a tear to the eyes of anyone from the 80s. It's an extraordinary piece of work that sort of blends into it, like going back to those concepts of old schools where you were standing up and ranking on the joystick to try and get in the right position and hammering on the huge, huge buttons, only to be sort of robbed of everything at the last minute your final death and showing as you're going across the screen and then the big continue sign at the end of it and you just hammer in the quarters or hammer in the 20 cent pieces in australia and just crank it back up and start again or continue on if you were lucky enough or quick enough to restart it the graphics are a win here the animation is a win here it's just so much like an 80s game, but at the same time, it's so much a different sort of era of understanding. Like, it's more an enlightened thing compared to what we did back in the 80s and 90s. This is a game that is questioning things, and the visuals art style is giving you that feeling of time, but at the same time, is giving you the analysis and ideas of the current time that we live within. Sound, music and voice up for a little listen and then we'll get back into describing and talking about my views about it. punk rocker from the Southern District. She was the wildest thing I'd ever seen. Oh man, that girl was born a rebel.
By far, the standout at times is the use of music in this. It is literally an 80s powerhouse sort of thing. It's the whole glam rock, it's the pulling of long hair, the sweatbands, the rocking out to thumping guitars and heavy beats, and it's all so reminiscent of that time. But at the same time, it captures the game music of that time as well and repeats it in such a way that it sounds similar to the old games but at the same time it's its own thing it's never over the top it's never understated but at the same time it's all 80s like even the ninja game sounds like something you listen to in, in the 80s of something out of a bruce lee movie or something like that it's so emphatically 80s and 90s sort of genre and the developers have done an excellent job in doing that. In the sounds we're talking mostly in the games itself because it's all that proper sounds from those proper games in those time periods like the beat em up at the beginning where it's a thump and it's that meaty punch that was always very prominent and sounded correct and it's always so present in this entire thing. I love every inch of it and I love how it's been designed and feels every time I run through it. The destruction of the um, R-Type, the running around in um, the burnout game. It's all so nostalgic but it's also so riveting because it's a new 80s kind of game and I think that's what captures me more about this and especially with the sounds that bring back all that sort of remembrance in the back of my skull of these games that I played as a kid and it's here. Lastly is the voice of the nameless protagonist. He's lost. He is in a quandary about his life, about all the things that are contained within his life and you feel that, you feel a tear running down for these sort of moments of his life being summed up or rubbed away from him for one thing or another and it's so reminiscent and so archetypal in how it's portrayed but at the same time being a kid in that time period you latch onto it because it's something that we all experience Things like Punky Brewster and different strokes and stuff like that, they all exist as classic archetypes, archetype, archetypes of games, sort of genres of drama and things that we have in our minds, in our brains in that time period. Is it any wonder that these things sort of perpetuate themselves outwards over long periods of time and are revamped every so often? But here it is a really enthusing story and the fact that we come to the end of it and you kind of are left lost left lonely it's been done on purpose but at the same time it it feels very sort of jaded it feels very jagged so sort of spank but you get that last moment at the very very tip of the end of the game and it's just an uplift and you get enticed to play more sort of thing so lastly we'll talk about my gameplay and my opinion of the game playing the game is a dream it is a fever dream because it is a masterpiece of work that has been made purely for some middle-aged guy from the 30s or 40s who's reliving his childhood dream somehow in this game it's fantastically done, the animation is done correctly, the scening, the scoping of it all, how you play each game, how each game relates to each other about the different parts of the story. Because if you follow the story, it's kind of a story of accepting grief. And there is more to the story, you can tell that. And that probably brings me to the one part of this game that is probably the hardest thing that hits it the most. It's its shortness. And that's what really kind of hurts a lot about this game. The game 
is going to be continued on. There is more story to this game and there'll be more of this game. But this particular iteration of the game, I don't know if we'll end up paying for DLCs or it will come as free DLCs. But this game's short. It is like two hours, bang, you're done. And I don't care how good or bad you have played these older type of games. For an old school person, I could see them finishing this in like 20, 30 minutes tops with all the cinematics and everything contained within. But even for me as an average to sort of constant game player, I finished this in less than two hours and it was not overly taxing on me. But I don't think that's the whole point of this game. It's not supposed to be taxing, it's supposed to be get into the feel of this game and pour it. And I think that's where the developer really hit the mark on this. They have created a sort of time capsule of the 1980s, 1990s. And it feels so reminiscent of that. And it, you can feel for the protagonist. You can feel for the entire overall of the game. And you know where you are in this game. And I think that's where this game's really hitting the mark. It's not an overly expensive game, and I think if you want to sort of throw yourself back into that period of time where you were feeling those games, and you're wanting to relive that, I think it's a great game to just go and try something that is something you've played, but it's a new take on the thing that you've played with a feeling of real story so anyway i hope you enjoyed the review i really hope that you enjoyed it enough to subscribe other than that it's been a fabulous day and i will see you all on the next video thank you and bye for now Welcome to suburbia, just outside the city, sometime in 1980X. What you see around here used to be all that I cared for, because it was all that I knew. It was here that I'd met my first friends, rode my first bike, found my first love, and found out that nothing lasts forever. This is the place I grew up in and grew out of. A place I loved and hated. <laughs>